Hello there everybody, it is me Fizzer Bunny, and welcome back to episode 7 of Let's Play Wildlife Park 2. Okay guys, so yes, we are back in Sanctuary Park, the greatest park in the world. And as you guys can see, there have been a couple of little changes here and there to our um, livestock and poultry area. And in this part, I actually want to begin creating enclosures and probably even placing in some exotic African animals. But before that, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a tour of the area that we've done and show you guys all the different changes that happened. So as you guys can see, all the enclosures have revised food and I just changed the arrangement of the stuff that the animals require like their food and their water and stuff like that. I also placed as many poop dung vacuums as much as possible because it helps the animal trainers, I mean the animal keepers um, a lot because the animals produce a lot of vacuum. Each enclosure I tried to put some shelter. Uh, all of them have this one except for the chickens which have a cute little chicken coop which might come with like an expansion or something i'm not sure because i got this game all of it at once so i don't know which came with what expansion and stuff and then what else has changed yeah probably the major change that happened is that i enlarged the pig pen because these guys were actually complaining so much because they had a small space we have 10 pigs so i kind of had to give them a relatively large space for them to move around and stuff and also they produce a lot of dung so i really had to put a dung vacuum and it kind of blocks their way. They can't get to their food and stuff, so I had to extend it a couple of tiles over here. Uh, but that, that's pretty much it. You know, I'm so excited to actually um, do some more stuff. Anyway, I feel like, yeah, we still have enough forage, which is okay. Um, I'm just looking at our production versus our consumption and I feel like we might need to produce some water yeah I totally feel like we need to or don't we water um, yeah we're using 367 kilograms per month I kind of want to produce 400 so let's produce um, 200 per water tank I guess would be great there we go and yeah, let's begin placing our African animals, um, which is probably going to be the majority of the space and the animals that we're going to have for this wildlife reserve. I'm going to call it like a reserve or sanctuary park because I, I, I love repeating myself and stuff, uh, but we're not going to open the park to the public. I just want to establish that premise. Um, and kind of give you guys an idea that this is not a park for entertainment. This is a park for keeping animals. Okay, there's kind of a difference, I think. I know. Anyway, okay, so I'm just extending this to serve as a guide. <laughs> it's not definite and stuff, but it's definitely going to help me kind of visualize where things would go being the OCD person that I am. I feel like the park's well, I feel like the main entrance should be somewhere here. Let's just say, you know what? Let's use the pathway. Um, Because I kind of still want to design this as a park, even though I just mentioned that this is not going to be open to the public. I kind of want to design it for myself. <laughs> I'm not making any sense, but yeah, pretty much that's what I'm going for. But that's going to be the main entrance or something like that. And then... We're gonna have a little bit of space, uh, probably over here. Um, and the first animal that we're actually gonna put are some lions, because I think they are a good introduction, I guess, to any park, if you guys get, get what I mean. Now I'm placing hills, because I love to do these every time I make these enclosures and stuff. I like making hills to kind of delineate and separate all the different animals, and since each region in the world is gonna have like a different look to it like for example the sahara is definitely for sure gonna look very deserty and stuff while some tropical animals will have of course tropical surroundings and pretty much all that stuff so um i think placing hills like these are a good 
thing to kind of just, you know, properly um, separate the look and the aesthetic of each world's region from the other, if that makes any sense. So yeah, I'm just flattening out a hill over here, but- and then we are going to carve out the enclosures from these, actually. Which is quite interesting. Um, I also do this in my own personal gameplay, so I kind of have a good idea of what I want to happen. Uh, but yeah, over here, the left bit is where we're gonna place the lions. I feel like they would be the perfect type of animal to place on the entrance of the park because they, they're the king of beasts and stuff like that. There's a lot of things, there's a lot of positive things that are associated with lions and stuff, so. And there's also a lot of negative, you know, they eat people or like they attack people and stuff, but we're not gonna bring those things up. This is just gonna be like a fun playthrough, you know, I'm not gonna highly politicize, politicize things. I feel like that might be a little bit too big. Make it a little bit smaller. There we go. And I just want to make sure that I kind of have enough space for the keepers as well. Because that's one thing that I really, 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 really forget. I never have any hindsight for my park keepers and maintenance people. I just never think of them at all. So I'm going to put like a bunch of them. <laughs> so I just don't you know, make my animals suffer. Even though I have immortality on, the animals really don't die, but they do suffer and they complain a lot, so I don't want that to happen at all. So let's do that. And yeah, let's place some animal keepers first, and then we're also gonna place some gardeners because I want some plants, actually. And we also need to place some... Handymen as well. Oh my gosh. There's these these are a lot of people <laughs> To put in a park and some of our plants are complaining, but they're fine They will be taken care of by our gardeners, but I'm just gonna go find the closest straight edge and mirror and see if we're straight <laughs> That did not sound right, but there we go. Let's see here. Let's put this guy Over here. I don't want these guys to take up so much space uh, but they do, I, you know, I think one advantage of Wildlife Park 3, which is the sequel to this game, is that... Let's close them since we don't have any animals yet. But yeah, one advantage of Wildlife Park 3 is that the personnel that you have in your park, they don't take that much space. They don't even have a building of their own, which is great for me. Because usually, you know, when you're talking about parks and when you're talking about personnel, they have one building, I think, collectively for all the guys that work at the park. So, you know, you really save space. Um and really get to use that space for where it's needed, which is for the animals. And that's great, because I love animals. I'm such an animal lover, I don't know why. I, of course, like many of you guys, I grew up watching Lion King and going out at the yard collecting insects and bugs. I am deathly afraid of spiders though, so don't even get me started on those. I mean, no, I'm not afraid of spiders. I meant frogs. I'm afraid of frogs and um, lizards. Ugh, those are common in my country. I know that some countries don't have like geckos. I mean, household th things. I'm so scared of those. I don't know why. I just hate slimy things. I just, ugh, I, I don't even want to get started. It's kind of creeping me out. But that, it's that, and you know, one, one really helpful, handy thing about putting hills is that it really delineates the space and kind of creates, um, you know, a space that's separate for utilities and for the animals, which I think is so important because you don't want your animals to see like these. I don't know why. I keep thinking about the animals a lot, but I don't know. I just really like to. Anyway, let's do that. Let's make it more natural. Natural, as Pewds would say. Just finished watching his Let's Play playthrough on um, Until Dawn, by the way, and 
<laughs> like, I also watched his bonus episode of Until Dawn. You guys should really check that thing out. That is an amazing game. I love watching Until Dawn. I've watched, I keep telling you guys that I've watched like so many playthroughs of it, but it's like not even funny. How many I've watched? I've watched like three from three different Let's Players on YouTube and I don't know, it's an amazing game and it's an amazing idea. The fact that not everybody has the same gameplay like 100%. Even though it's not a simulation game, you know, like all the people that I've watched really had different outcomes and I really, really like that aspect of it. I think that's really cool. But anyway, since we now have our utilities, I'm gonna put a hill on behind these guys as well, by the way. Just put a hill like so, like that. Uh, of course, these are just guides. I'm gonna clean these up. Clean it up. Like so. And then um, just make sure that they are placed nicely. Um, we'll focus more on that later on, but I'm pretty sure you guys are freaking itching to see some wild animals. So we're gonna place the lion enclosure. Now I wanna see how big the lions are. And yes, I have kept some lions in my other parks before. So that's that. I also wanna make sure that I put a door over here. Okay, this is usually what I do in my parks. I get one really, really big fence and I use that as like a background for my enclosures. I feel like these look cleaner and I don't know, they, I, I feel like they kind of separate the hills and the background from the animals and stuff. I don't know if that makes any sense. But yeah, I do these a lot. Um, I like to use this one in particular for some strange reason. But yeah, and as you guys notice, the enclosures themselves are not grid you know or like are not built in a grid they're gonna be very organic and that's pretty much the look that i'm going for oopsie yeah, that looks really awkward over there uh, but that's pretty much kind of the look that i'm going for for my enclosures for the wild animals um i don't know why because you know i think honestly placing things in a grid takes so much more time than placing them in like an organic type of shape like this one that we're doing here so there we go that looks nice actually there we go lovely jubbly is that like a you know what <laughs> is that like a british thing because i hear a lot of british youtubers say that lovely jubbly and then i'm gonna make a wall over here and people are you know realistically if we open the park people are gonna enter from here so the only reason why I placed that wall there is it's, it's it's nearer to the, you know, caretakers and stuff. And then I am going to put a door. And that is what I hate. Every time I put a door, if you put it to, to a, a fence that's small enough, it's going to make it look like there's a hole on the fence. And I don't like that. So I'm going to make this thing a little bit bigger or longer. And, okay, in case you guys are wondering, I've been telling you guys this story for, like, the past goodness knows how many episodes anyway. Um, so I might as well end it. The concert outside my house is finally over. Thank freaking goodness. Like, hell, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna put it there. Okay. I'm gonna put it there. Or, yeah, I'm gonna put it there. And then I'm gonna use this fence, low stone wall. Um... So I just really like to use this myself. Uh, but yeah, the concert also in my house is finally is finally finished, you guys. Like, yes, thank God they're done. I can get some rest. I can finally concentrate on what I'm doing. I'm gonna make that look a little bit nicer. Uh, they did end with a fireworks display and it looked amazing from my balcony. So at least that's something, right? There we go go i get so ocd but the reason for that is just i don't like to backtrack especially when i've done quite a lot already mm, like that and then maybe oh <gasps> why 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 okay there we go 
that looks nice and then you can actually overlap your fences so what i usually do is use this one maybe we can use other types of fences that is barbed wire like hell no that's like animal abuse like seriously uh maybe this one this is a really durable fence so um yeah let's just use the other one i don't like to use this one because it looks like you're putting the animals in a prison and i don't like i don't like that i don't like that there you go i think that looks really nice for the lion enclosure um okay now it's time to play some lions they like um let's see what type of ground do they like let's just pause the game before we place these guys and then we're gonna place how many do we need we need four lions at least so we're gonna put one male and three females make sure to sterilize them because i don't want to deal with their babies usually the only types of animals that i don't sterilize are large ones are large ones like elephants and giraffes because it's easy to see their offspring unlike lions and stuff which it's not so easy to see okay one kilogram of water and seven kilograms that is a lot of meat oh my gosh okay hardness of ground 40 to 60 okay 40 to 60 let's give them oh this is 60 that's nice okay let's give them this one this looks very deserty which is nice right it's that hopefully they don't complain makes the lions look like they're standing out from the crowd which is great they're not blending in to their environment okay we need to start producing meat and we need about um seven kilograms per day 28 per day and then um so yeah no that's fish <laughs> uh here is our meat production we need to produce um production per month okay seven i have my calculator handy with me you guys I don't think they even follow, like, the thing. Or do they? Hmm. So I'm gonna calculate really quickly. Seven times... We have four of them. Times... Let's just say 30 days in a month. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. Yeah, let's just produce 200 kilograms per month and see, like, our consumption. I don't think they follow it, because... I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I honestly don't have any freaking idea. Oopsie. And then, okay. So we're gonna turn on one of our animal keepers now. Just so that he would be ready to take care of some of our animals. And we also are going to turn off our <laughs> gardeners because they're not doing anything right now. Okay, first thing that we're gonna place, of course, are some meat containers. And I'm gonna place a lot of them because when you have a lot of animals the animal keepers find it hard to keep track of them so usually oh my gosh do you guys hear that sound that is actually kind of creepy sounds really creepy but also very majestic okay we're gonna have two let's actually place four of these i guess would be great and then so that the animals don't crowd up and get stuck in place, I'm going to separate these feeding troughs or feeding whatever. There we go. They're dog bowls for the lions. And then, of course, they're going to need some water. So I'm going to put this water thing there. And then I think they need some scratchy scratch. Yeah, they do. I know that because I have kept some lions before in this game, not in real life. And I have a special connection with lions because if you guys did not know, my name is Leo. Uh, whole, my full name is Leonardo, but I don't mention that often. My nickname is Leo, okay? You can call me Leo for short or Freezer Bunny or whatever. Anyway, but I have a special affinity for lions because they have a lot of meaning, especially like with my name and stuff, right? Right? Uh, why are they complaining? Okay, I would like something to scratch. You guys are fine. You guys are fine. Okay, cool beans. We have our first animal. We're gonna wait a little bit and see how they do. And while that's happening, I'm gonna check on the plants because I think some of them are complaining. Uh, yeah, we have our 
<laughs> handymen struggling, it looks like, to maintain our fences. Maybe I should put a couple of them, but some of our plants need some watering. Which, oh my god, I can hear the sheep. Oh, this feels so good. And then, uh, yeah, we're good. Um, I wish we were able to actually produce meat based off of the farm animals that we keep. Look at the chicken, it's inside the chicken coop. How adorable. Uh, they're all sterilized, so they will never lay any eggs, so. That's that. But yeah, like I was saying, I wish we were able to produce meat out of the animals that we keep, but of course that's not gonna happen because I think that would make this game 10 times more controversial. So yeah, we're just looking around. My elbows hurt. Just took a sip of water. And I'm gonna look at our production and consumption thing and see what needs to be done. We're still producing so much fruit and so much vegetable and we're barely consuming any, which is interesting. Meat, 19 kilograms. We're producing, we need 50 kilograms per month, it looks like. Okay, whatever. And then I feel like, I don't know what to do with these walls actually and these hills. What? Why are they complaining? I am so exhausted. Then why don't you rest? Okay, it's fine. We don't need to put any shelter because it doesn't rain. We don't have a climate. <laughs> we don't even have a night time yet. So yeah, I feel like I might as well also put like an enclosure over here as well. What do you guys think? Yeah, let's think about that for a second. Uh, let's get rid of that. Um, patch of mud and try to or maybe just you know maybe even a waterfall what do you guys think we're not we're no strangers to those we've made quite a very beautiful waterfall in my opinion for our quote unquote hydroelectric dam as I'd like to call it yeah this can be another enclosure actually I think that would oopsie yeah, this would work really well as an enclosure, I think. I don't know. We'll have to see. I have to think of the animal that we can keep here. I don't want to make it super big because I still want to have space over here for the outside for like... I don't know. I just kind of want to have space for the outside in case we need to expand our farm area because I totally am trying to prepare for that. I did look off camera at the requirements that some advanced animals would want and a lot of them like almost all the animals want to have some forage so i'm a little bit worried that we are going to be short in terms of production right now though we're producing a lot of forage like we're producing more than what we're consuming i think i don't know like we're already consuming a lot so that's something that i kind of want to just pay attention to okay anyway let's what should we put here? Uh, let's see here. And we're gonna go for the African theme. So anything that kind of lives- maybe zebras. I think- maybe- maybe even giraffes. What do you guys think? Because the giraffes really don't need that much space. Oh my god, they're relatively big though. Yeah, let's place the giraffes here. Okay, yay! More animals, I'm so excited. And, okay, there we go. I should have looked at the giraffes requirements and stuff before doing this, because I'm a little bit scared that this might be a little small for them or something, I'm not sure. There we go, ooh. It doesn't go behind. You know, I might have to do something about that hill. Yeah, or just leave it there for now. I don't know. Maybe I'll do something off camera. Okay, and then let's also do that. Pretty much finish off our giraffe enclosure. And I totally am agreeing with the fact that these, you know, enclosures are called enclosures. Because calling them cages are... I think it's a little bit 
cruel. <laughs> See you guys, I am super sensitive to the animals and I really do care about them. Uh, I love hearing the lion sounds, they sound so majestic. They, the deep growls that they're making, they sound so majestic. That would probably scare me though, <laughs> in real life. Okay, oopsie, where? Okay, so I guess, um, or maybe we can make, yeah, we can probably start from here instead. Like that. Should we go for that? Yeah, let's go for that. Whatever. That works. Well, let's do the exact same thing. Oh, yeah, we need to open our maintenance, guys. Because they totally have some work now that we have an enclosure. I'm going to put them on the center. And then I just hope that the giraffes actually survive <laughs> no i just hope that j the giraffes actually find this a comfortable size 50 to 60 hardness of ground water forage fruit and minerals that's a lot water forage fruit and minerals okay they want 20 kilograms of forage i told you guys we need a lot of forage where is there is i have also kept giraffes in my own personal gameplay so it's fine i'm very familiar with what they need my back hurts because I have not been leaning on my backrest for my chair. I'm not used to it. I'm used to sitting on a bed. Uh, anyway, price 75. 200 kilograms. This is a lot. This is a lot for... Whoa. Okay, we're, we're going to put um, just one of these, I guess. Because that's a lot, actually. Yeah, let's put this thing over there. And this feeding instrument is actually exclusive to the giraffes. I don't think, I can't think of any other animal in this game that uses the same feeding thing. We can probably even just place some trees and the giraffes would be fine. But since they only need seven, um, 200 kilograms is for sure more than enough. We can add a couple more if it's lacking and stuff but yeah that's great how many giraffes do we need to keep we need three oh we don't need that much okay we need we can put one male and two ladies and then i'm gonna sterilize them once again i totally feel like our money is gonna run in the negative really soon so that's definitely something to watch out for even though it's not gonna affect us anyway uh, let's do that. I love looking at giraffes. Um, when I was younger, I would keep a lot of animal toys, if you guys get what I mean. They had like... In the toy store, you would see plastic animals and stuff. And I love those. I love those so much. You also want some minerals as well, which I'm going to place over here. Okay, fine. We can place it there. I hate looking at the minerals. They look so bizarre. And then, um, I want to do something about this fence because it looks really weird to me. Let's do that. Just follow the curves of the mountain. And it also doesn't want to extend. Okay, you know what? Fine. We can end there. Cool, cool beans. So far, I really like what we have. They Okay, they also want fruit. How many fruit do they want? Or how much? One kilogram per day. That's not. So, that's not so much. Uh, okay, so let's just just place one apple basket over here. There we go. It's probably enough for these guys. And let's look at this in first person. Whoa! I wish there was a way to take away all the different um, icons that are above the buildings and stuff. Because even if I fade the interface. It still doesn't disappear. The icons and stuff still don't disappear. You cannot see the lions. But the giraffes are looking very, very majestic, actually, if I do say so myself. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and actually take a little bit of a break, grab some water, and also use the facilities. And I will be right back in just a second, okay, guys? Alrighty, guys, I'm back, and I'm so refreshed. I can give you guys, like, 15 minutes more of gameplay and stuff like that. So, the next animal that we're gonna add, and probably the last for this part, is 
something that's a little bit more complicated. We're gonna tackle a larger beast this time, and yes, you guys, we're gonna place an elephant. <laughs> I'm so excited, but before that, I'm actually gonna move this pathway. Um, I wanna put the elephant enclosure over here, and then this pathway kind of needs to be relocated. I don't want it to take up so much space so it's going to be it does not want to click where I want it to okay I'm gonna put it over here there we go I don't know that's a variable location anyway we really don't need them uh, but yeah okay let's paint that sand because that's gonna bother me um, and then the elephant I have also kept elephants in my own personal gameplay and they are a pain to take care of. They're very very complex animals naturally and they're also not that easy to take care of in this game. Just to give you guys a heads up. I always make my elephant enclosures the largest in my zoo. Um, I guess that's probably because I never had any other animal larger than elephants anyway. but. Usually elephant enclosures are the largest that I have in my zoos or in my parks and stuff like that. I don't know, whatever. And yeah, we're gonna just put that there. Just to give us a rough idea of this enclosure. I don't want to make it too large, but definitely for sure very large. <laughs> um, okay, let's do that. And I think we require three elephants at least for the herd so that's that i'm gonna flatten these guys like so and i'm gonna use the smallest brush like so like just to kind of give it a little bit more fine detail because i usually like to put like little nooks if you guys get what i mean like i like making be bean shaped um, enclosures that looks like it's big enough just looks like <laughs> I doubt it it's big enough because the elephants want to swim which is weird but they that's one of their requirements and usually I have to make a pond for them and stuff so uh, yeah let's just there we go I feel like that's a good size okay that's for sure a good size for the elephant enclosure okay nice nice um time to place this wall to serve as the backdrop i really like this design of like enclosure because it really gives you like i don't know it really brings the focus to the animals you know i think it would be such an effective way for zoos to create things like these because I, I it's a little bit painful to see animals being caged into square cage even though that's what we did for our farm animals <gasps> okay um so yeah i'm gonna do that for now this pathway okay whatever that's okay the animal the elephant enclosure looks a little bit weird Um, I'm gonna go and give it a little bit more curves, I guess, because um, it kind of looks really bizarre and I don't like it. I hate making it look like so ra ragged and stuff. And of course, it's gonna take me a million years to get over this. Oh, I hear some- uh-oh, somebody pooped. Yeah, I can hear their dung from here. <laughs> That sound effect it is, that sound effect is so large. I mean, it's so loud. And then we're gonna delete these because they are too straight. Is that even a thing? Yeah, I just didn't like the shape of that. And then we're gonna give it a little bit more um, organic feel, I guess. And a nice little tidbit of info, you guys. I live really, really close to to the zoo here in Manila. I could probably even walk there. Honestly, I kid you guys not. I can't see the zoo from my window. But all I see are trees and stuff. Because, of course, you need to look a little bit closer if you actually want to see the animals. Okay, something needs to be done here. 
the reason why I really am putting a lot of effort on the elephant enclosure is because you know usually that's the first thing you enter when you see the zoo I don't know about other countries but every time I go to a zoo in my country the elephant enclosure is the first thing that I see so I want it to look really nice so that's um, and then I'm gonna get rid of that and also this one and maybe just straighten it or something like so yeah that's so much better okay I'm good with that let's just do something about this hill okay whatever it's it's fine it's fine and then what is this complaint I'd like to mate now the ground is too soft well because you're standing on sand okay so yeah animals 100% Plants 100%. Where am I gonna put this door for the elephant enclosure? <gasps> okay, I'm gonna put it over here towards the back. Like, um, like this. It's probably, um, large enough for the door. There we go. And then, uh, let's see here. Where is, okay, this one fence. I am gonna make it nice and big, this enclosure. It's also so awkward to see the elephants in a small space. Um, so usually that's one of the reasons why I make bigger enclosures as well. Because it's not fun to see um, the animals. Just graphically and the 3D, they look horrible. Like They look like... You know, you, you really get a sense of, in your mind, that's that's not supposed to happen in real life. But I'm pretty sure none of y'all are talking, are understanding what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Let's put this fence over here because I'm pretty sure y'all are excited for the elephants. There are two kinds of elephants, I think, we have in this game. We have one standard African elephant and we have some mammoths. And I'm... So excited to actually make like an Ice Age themed area for the park. Okay, you know what? Let's look at it through. Water, forge. Oh my gosh, this is so much. Run, swim, scrape, wallow. I told you guys, these guys are so picky. And we need to make a pond for them first. And it needs to be deep as well. <laughs> it needs to be deep because th they are big animals and they literally want to be submerged. It's not just, you know, oh, I want just a drop of water. They want to be submerged. So this pond needs to be big. I think the, honestly, I think elephants really do want large water areas and stuff. Because in the zoo here in Manila, in Manila Zoo, the elephant also kind of, oh my gosh, I can hear the, the elephant also kind of has a huge pool of water even though I never saw the elephant actually inside of it I'm gonna kind of smoothen out this area cuz yeah there we go looks fine it looks like the elephants can get to it really easily next thing that we're gonna put of course is a small water pump oh that's not so small when you look at it inside the enclosure but I think it's fine and then what type of ground do these guys want are the elephants okay it's so tricky to find them okay there it is what type of ground do they want um, 0 to 55 okay we can give them the wallow and I love giving these to the animals because they they then they wouldn't complain. Uh, yeah, about wallowing, I mean, because the, the the animals that like to wallow always complain. Ooh, I'd like to wallow in mud, and here's you're literally standing on mud. So here we go. Let's do that. It also provides great contrast. You can easily see the elephants from these from a more aesthetic kind of thing. Here we go, just covering the whole thing in case the freaking animals complain. Okay, there we go, just a little bit 
a, a patch there and a patch here. Okay, cool beans, cool beans. And then we're gonna place a crap ton of feeding troughs. <laughs> we need 70 per elephant, so we need three of these at least. At least we don't have to put some water. Like, um, yeah, I know. At least we don't have to put some water troughs, right? Because we already have some water in our enclosure. I hope this is. I hope this place is big enough for the elephants, though. I'm gonna be so annoyed if it's like not big enough. Okay, let's just pop it there. Okay, and then oh my god, they need to scrape. Oopsie, I forgot. Ugh. Okay, where's the scrape thing? I hate this thing. It's so huge. And I always say that all the time. Scrape, wallow, mud, uh, water. Do they want fruits? I think they do. Ugh. I told you guys the elephants were a pain in the butt. And we don't even have them yet. Just contemplating the idea of elephants is quite intimidating and then this one we can put we literally have no space you know what yeah we need one more i'm gonna put it over here i hope they can get to it you know i'm gonna put it over here instead there we go that works and then time to put them uh so that they can get some of their basic needs taken care of over and done with we're gonna put one male and two females and I'm gonna not sterilize them because we might actually benefit from having elephant calves can they even swim in this I don't think they can I like to forage for food is something to scratch myself I like to wall in the mud do they want fruit no actually they know they don't cool beans okay and they would also want to swim, I'm pretty sure, so... Yeah. Two hours a day. Do I need to make a bigger pond? I feel like I might need to. Because this is definitely too shallow for them. I told you guys that they look so awkward in like a cramped enclosure. I don't necessarily think that this enclosure is cramped. You know, I'm going to pause my game. See if I can do something about this pond. I'm gonna get the elephants out of the way. No, it doesn't want to be bigger. Ugh. Yeah, it does not want to be bigger. Maybe we can do that. Nah, nah, let's not. Okay, whatever. Oopsie. <laughs> One of our elephants escaped. Since we don't have any people, I think it's fine if the animals escape because there's no danger whatsoever. And they don't harm, like, the animal keepers. <laughs> Which is so funny because the animal keepers, like, spend s is, is this guy swimming? No, they're wallowing in the mud. <laughs> you guys are supposed to swim. You know what, you guys? What I'm actually going to do is do this off camera because i feel like this part has been long enough i'm gonna extend this enclosure over here give the elephants a bigger pond and hopefully that'll solve the problem but yeah that's going to be it for this part i hope you guys had fun it's definitely fun to see some more animals in our park so yeah i hope you guys had fun please don't forget to hit that like favorite and subscribe button because it really does help me out a lot you all have an awesome 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 day thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys next time bye bye